Guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I mounted and balanced my own wheels on this 2009 Toyota Prius. Guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. All right, let's get this car up on uh, jack stands and take these wheels off. Next thing we need to do is to break the bead. And to do that, we're going to be using a floor jack. There are different methods for breaking the bead on a tire without using a tire machine. But uh, this way seemed uh, feasible to me, and I tried it. And I came up with uh, what I think is, is the best way, at least for me, to, to do it successfully every time. And all you need is a standard floor jack. You're also going to need... A couple of tire irons and we're going to be using these tire irons later on anyway to uh, to change the tire but this is a uh, Pittsburgh automotive you can pick these up Harbor Freight and this is a 24 inch general purpose tire iron you're gonna need two of these and what I did here is I drilled these two holes here and these are uh, so there's one four and three quarters and then another one at six and three eighths so you're going to need to do this to both tire irons. You're also going to need a ratchet strap. And then um, some screws that you're going to use to mount this stuff. So there, these are the two different screws that I used. So these I used to mount the metal brackets to the 4x4 and 2x4. And then these are the screws that I use to mount the tie irons to the 4x4. So uh, for these uh, drywall screws, these are outdoor drywall screws, so they're a little bit more robust. Coarse thread, and uh, they're about two and a half inches long. So you're going to need four of these. And then the, the screw to attach the little bracket, those are about an uh, inch and a quarter long. And they have a broad head. And these are the galvanized brackets that I use. You can pick these up at Home Depot in the construction section. Uh, they're used primarily to join uh, two by fours for framing houses. And the way you're gonna attach it is get yourself a piece of four by four and this four by four section is about 18 inches long and then you're also going to need a section of 2 by 4 I cut mine 8 inches long and then this is how you're going to attach it so you're going to use that galvanized bracket one exactly the way it is and then another one you're going to bend it 90 degrees along the short side fasten it to the to the 4 by 4 and the 2 by 4 and then this part's done. Now my floor jack has a greasing fitting where this piece of wood is going to go. So I countersunk mine. If yours is like mine, then you might have to do the same. Another thing you're going to need is a little scrap piece of wood. And this is to protect the rim from the floor jack plate. All right, let me show you how to set it up. Two tire irons to the piece of wood. And they're going to go with the spoon side facing up. So again, the spoon side facing up. And then I pre-drilled this for these uh, screws. So I recommend doing the same so you don't split the wood. All right, so what it's going to end up looking like is like this. And this is what's going to push down on the bead. Get your little scrap piece of wood and put it uh, on, the, on the cup. Uh, 
turn this this way so you better. You're also going to need a valve stem tool. So get one of these little tools. And this end, the end that has the little cutout, is the side that you're going to use on the valve stem. So go ahead and remove the valve stem. And that's going to let the And here's a little valve stem. And let me show you how the tool works. So you slip it over the over the valve stem just like that. And then it it uh, tightens and loosens it this way. Okay? That's how that thing works. And don't lose your valve stem. Once the air is out, get the 2x4 and 4x4 section, and you're going to place it on top of the, the jack, and you're going to pull the wheel down, and you're going to position it. I'll bring you guys around to this side so you can see what it's supposed to look like on this side. So you want the, the spoon side that faces up to be underneath the lip. And keep the tire at this angle. Don't, don't prop up the other end because this, this will help us get to the right part of the, the tire to, to press against. And then what you're going to use is you're going to use the ratchet strap. I like to do it is I'll, I'll place the ratcheting part of the ratchet strap on top. And then I take the hook side, slide it up underneath the, the floor jack. And then I hook, I hook the two together on the other side, just like this. See that? And then I take the other end and I just fold it over itself and I slip it inside of this this little uh, space in between this bar here. And then I engage the, the ratchet mechanism and then I start tightening it. And what this does is it wraps this end around the the strap and it binds it so it can't it can't come out all right and you're gonna ratchet this down until it's tight it doesn't have to be crazy tight but just snug so right now it's real snug it's not gonna move anywhere let me back things up here so you get a good view of this Then you're going to start jacking it up. And what you'll see is the floor jack, the way it works is the piece of wood can't move because it's being held by the strap. So it can't, it can't move up. The floor jack is going to lift up and push the rim towards the 2x4. But since it, the, I'm sorry, towards the 4x4. But since the 4x4 can't move, it's going to push the rubber down. Because the rubber right now is being pinned by these two spoons. And then, uh, make sure you wear safety glasses just in case any of this stuff uh, pops off. But it works really well. So just start jacking it up slowly. And you'll see that the two, the two tire irons will start pressing against that bead. And there it is. So there's the there's the bead broken on that side. And 
I'm lowering the floor jack. Loosening the strap. And then I'm going to turn, I'm going to flip the tire over. Take off the 4x4 four four with the tire irons. You can press this beat down all the way around. And I'm doing it opposite the valve stem because this car has a tire pressure sensor. So I don't want to be pressing down near the valve stem side. So I pick the opposite side. Turn it around and do the same thing. Place it on the little piece of wood. And adjust your tire so it fits underneath these, uh, these tire irons. Return the ratchet strap to the previous position. Move the strap close to the tire and uh, re retighten it. All right, now we're going to do the same process for the other side. Start to jack up the car, or jack up the uh, car jack. And now you can see that the second beat is broken. the strap take the piece of wood off with the spoons Something under the rim so it doesn't get scratched up. And then uh, make sure that the, the bead is broken all the way around. Because now will be a good time to remove any weights. So this one has the it's a clip on weight. And to get this off, all you gotta do is get under it with a with either a screwdriver or some kind of a prying tool. I'm just gonna Get my little pry tool underneath this edge. I'll pop it off this way so you guys can see it. I'm just putting one end in, and then I'm just hitting it with a with a rubber mallet, and twisting it off. And that's it. The weight comes right off. Now I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of these these clip-on weights because, like you saw, dirt and stuff starts to build up around this 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 part. Another thing that I don't like is on this Prius, they use a uh, plastic cover so they use this this little uh, plastic ring but if you look if you look at the plastic ring in here it starts to get filled with dirt so looking at the let me bring you guys in close so you can see so if you look carefully here you see all this dirt that's built up in here what happens is this dirt that's collecting in between the outside rim cap and the rim itself will throw this wheel out of balance so and this is unfortunately this is the reason that uh, I decided to start changing my own tires now this may not work uh, the manual method may not work as well if you're dealing with a low profile tire if you're if you're using a low profile tire very wide rims uh, you may have to take it to a, to a tire shop 
But the reason that I like doing stuff like this myself is because the tire shop is not going to take the time. Number one, they probably won't even remove the rim cap if it's if it's on a Prius like this. All right, so they'll just leave the rim cap off on. They'll remove the you know the weights or they'll remove whatever, and uh, they're not going to take the time to clean all this dirt off of your wheel. So what they're going to do is they'll remove the wheel. If they remove the cap, they remove the cap. And most in in a Prius, you don't have to remove the cap to to get the wheel off. You can just leave it on unless they got a weight trapped in between the cap and the rim. Then in that case, they would remove the cap. Uh, so they're essentially balancing the wheel with this dirt already on it. And all it takes is for you to wash your car one time and clean your wheels real, real well, and now your car's out of balance. So it's these these type of small details that the uh, the mainstream tire shops don't address. Now, if you go to a, a a wheel place that just deals with mag wheels all the time, they may have some seasoned professionals in there. So if they take the time to clean the wheel properly they're probably going to charge you a little bit more money but this is something that you can easily do at home uh yourself take the time to to clean everything up real well and then when you balance the wheel it'll stay balanced for for a, a, a lot longer time all right so let me uh next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to you got to pop this cap off and this just presses on from the other side so let me let me get that off So it's just a little uh, pressure and it pops off. And now let's head over to the to the bench and I'll show you guys how to dismount it. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm turning the wheel so that I, so that I'm putting the uh, the valve stem towards me. And then just put the wheel down on top of the hub adapter. And I'll talk about this hub adapter a little bit later. And then I'm just fastening it down with some, uh, some bolts. And the reason I'm screwing it down to the hub adapter is so the wheel doesn't move around. And this can be done without without this uh, this step, but like I said, it's much easier to do this if the wheel isn't moving when you're trying to pry on it. And another thing that's important is anytime that you're either mounting or dismounting the tire, it's a good idea if you use some type of lubricant because that'll just make things easier for you. So this is just some dishwashing soap. And then just take your, your hand and make sure that it's all nice and lubricated. And the reason you want to do this is so that it slips over the rim easier. If you don't have this lubricant on there, you're gonna you're gonna battle with this. All right, now you want to grab your your tire spoons, and when you're gonna when you're gonna unload the tire, you want these 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 spoon ends facing up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get both of them in here. So I'm just going to press down. And I'm going to have them spaced apart about, uh, I want to say about a foot. So get them both down in there. And you want to make sure that you have this side of the, this side of the tire pressed down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this down with my hip, put my two tire irons in, and in this case I can line them up with these with these two spoke ends, and I'm going to pull I'm going to pull both these bars towards me. 
You can do one first, and then you can do the other one. All right. And once you get it, once you get it over like this, you might be you might be able to pull pull the uh, the, the tire off. So just keep it like this, and just pull up on the pull up on the tire. And because you got that lubricant in there, this thing might might loosen up for you. All I'm doing is just pushing down on the rim and pulling up on the tire while pinning these two bars down with my hip. You can come back and you can work this side. If you want, you can pull up. You you'll feel it. It starts to it starts to slip. Uh, there it goes right there. Okay, so there it goes. So the reason I like doing it this way is I'm not I'm not scratching up the rim with these spoons. Now we got this side off, we're going to take it outside and I'll show you how to dismount the other side. We're going to need those tire irons again. You're going to, you're going to flip the, the wheel over. And we want to lubricate this side of the wheel and, the, uh, and then this, this side of the rim. So I'm going to go ahead and lubricate here. Again, using the dish soap. in there make sure you got the whole bead so the idea is to lubricate the two surfaces that are going to be working working against each other and I'm going to flip this over and then get some Dishwashing liquid on my hand and rub it on the inside of the inside of the rim. Just on the edge, it's going to be contacting the, the other side of the tire. And then another thing you want to do is you want to make sure you get all that soap off your hands so that it's not all slippery when you're trying to do this. So now lift up the tire. And if you if 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 you look look at the wheel I'm not sure if you can see this in the video but you can actually see through this part of the wheel so we're gonna do the same thing that we did before with the tire iron and I like to position the wheel so that the tire irons are in between spokes so that when you're prying up you're not you're not you don't hit the rim and, and damage the spoke and always I work opposite the side that has the tire pressure sensor So again, since we're going to remove these, we need these uh, spoons to be facing up. Actually, in this case, you could face them, face them down. So since we're going to pull, pull in this direction, face the spoons down. And you can get them in at an angle. Check on the other side to make sure that you can see them.
and let me show you on this side about how you want this to look. See if it's in the shot here. Damn. Can't see with the darn. But anyway, you want the uh, you want the two spoons to be sticking out. And again, like I said, make sure that you have them away from these uh, from the center spoke. Let me put you back on this side. Hopefully that's in, in the frame there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna crank on these. And then while you're while you're holding it, you can just push push on the wheel. You're gonna hold this with your with your side with your side, and then just push on the rim. And because of the lubricant, it'll come right off. See that? All right. So now once we got that off, we gotta clean up. We gotta clean up this wheel. So we gotta get all this dirt and stuff off of it. Uh, another thing too that you wanna always make sure you clean up. Are these surfaces because this is, this is where the bead goes so if you feel it with your hand and it feels rough you want to make sure that it's nice and smooth to do that what i'm going to use is a, a 220 grit wet sandpaper and i'm going to work both the edges so you can see all this rubber all this uh contamination that's in the bead area needs to be uh addressed guys okay, so it's been about an hour of blasting and uh Let's get it out of here. Put a little bit along this edge here. And just make sure that you get it all the way around this bead real good. And then get any uh, leftover. Once you got your lubricant on this side, go ahead and flip it over and put your lubricant on the other side. Make sure to get the inside edge as well. Also want to get the this top edge of the of the rim. So just liberally put it underneath here. Turn your wheel over, and you're supposed to mount the the yellow dot on the tire. So if you see the tire has a yellow dot, this yellow dot goes where the valve stem goes. So I'm gonna position the tire this way. And what you could do is, is push down while pulling, using the rim to pull. And you can push with your thumb. So I'm using my thumb to push on this uh, inside bead. I'm going to walk my way up. And you can use both thumbs to 
push on that bead. And then just keep walking your way up. And just keep working it. And eventually it'll, it'll drop down. Almost down. There you go. All right. It's kind of a hassle, but uh, it's not that difficult. And then I'm going to line up the valve stem again. Now this last part, I'm going to finish up on the bench. So let me take you guys over to the bench, and I'm going to show you how we're going to mount this part. All right, guys. So this. So what I have here is uh, an adapter that I 3D printed, and this matches up with the hub for the 2009 Toyota Prius, which is the car we're working on today. And um, all this is is a piece of uh, three-quarter inch galvanized pipe. And then underneath here is a um, pipe anchor. So it looks kind of like a like a round thing with, with threads, and it has some screws that screw directly into the 4x4 and I got the 4x4 clamped in the vise and here actually let me take it take it off and I'll show you this is real simple it's just uh, a couple of 4x4s four, four four glued together and then I use some construction galvanized plate that's typically joined for uh, joining 2x4s uh, and 4x4s four uh, in uh, construction so that's what's holding this part. And then this whole thing just slides down in the vise. And then the vise is bolted to the table. All right, so uh, let me get the wheel on here. And then I have these, these are some 12 millimeter by 1.5 thread pitch bolts. And these are kind of long, really what you need, at least for my 3D printed part is a 20 millimeter one. This one is 30, so I had to use a spacer here. But this is going to hold this down so it doesn't move around while I'm working with the tire irons. All right, and same as before, if, uh, if the soap is dried up, just apply a little bit more soap. I'm just going to put some on my hand here and just reapply it on the bead. And the reason you want this lubricant on here is because this is going to help you get this thing on here. Otherwise, without the lubricant, it's, you're going to be battling with this thing. Alright, so I'm going to push down the one side that has the uh, yellow dot. And I'm going to start working the tire down. I'm going to grab one of my uh, tire irons. And while pushing down on this side, I'm going to crank up on the other side. And you got to make sure that you keep this one side down. going to keep working, working this thing as you go. 
Once you get it like this, what you can do is you can lift up on the outside of the wheel to get the tool under. So put the spoon with the uh, hook side up and get up over the over the rim, and you're gonna you're gonna pull it over. Make sure to keep the side down that you got down down. And use the flat side, get it up and over the rim. Pull it over. There you go. All right, now I'm going to show you how to set the bead. So now take an opportunity right now if, if it's uh, misaligned, go ahead and Rotate your tire to get your bow stem aligned with that yellow dot. All right, so let me show you something here. So this, the, the wheel has two, two areas for the bead to set. And uh, in the case of this Toyota, one side is kind of, has kind of like a round over on it. That's the, uh, the inside part of the wheel. And then the, the outside, the outside has this, this uh, rib on it. So I'm not going to try to set the outside this way. I'm going to set the, the, the inside one. So to set this one, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to add some more lubricant here. I'll wipe that around the edge. We're good. And I'm also wiping the... Uh, the inside of the wheel. I'm just putting a little bit on my hands. I'm going to put this where the rubber needs to slide over to seat that bead. And then I'm going to center the rim over uh, one of the old tires. So when I push down on the rim, the rim can go down, and uh, this uh, this bead can push can push into position. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand on it. And while I'm standing on it, I'm going to start pulling up on the uh, on the tire. You need to reposition, reposition it. I'm just putting my knees on there now, and then I'm pulling up on the tire. There it goes. All right. So that's one bead in. And uh, let's double check our still here. So we're good there. All right, what we can do now is move over to the compressor, and we're going to start applying air, and then we'll gently press the rim in. 
until it uh, seals up against his edge and then pops it. So we're only going to get one pop because one bead is already in. All right, so now I'm just getting my air. And then I'm going to start, start, oh, uh, you got to make sure that you put your, uh, so here's our, our valve stem and our valve stem tool. And it goes with the, uh, the little uh, unthreaded side face down. And you don't want it crazy tight, just snug. All right, so now I'm going to start putting air in it. And I'm going to softly press down on the rim. And you want to make sure your fingers are out of the way because this thing, when it pops, it's going to pop and it's loud. There you go. Apologize for the compressor. All right, so now fill it up. Uh, Toyota Prius is 32 PSI. Uh, sorry about all the racket. All right, uh, so this... Go ahead and wipe up your wheel, wipe down your wheel. And what we're going to do next is we're going to balance it. Make sure to take off uh, the stickers because you don't want to balance it with these stickers on it. And I'm going to clean up this side. All right, these are the parts that we're going to use to balance the wheel. And these are just some 3D printed parts. So all this is is a a little cap that goes on the end of this uh, closet hanger pipe. And um, hardened steel uh, drywall screw. So unlike the black ones, uh, these these are these are stronger. They're made for uh, outdoor use. And what I did is I ran the uh the tip on a little uh on a little sander to kind of get rid of the, the threads at the very top so they wouldn't interfere with the balancing then there's the the cone assembly so this is just an allen bolt inside of here uh, and then the nice thing about the uh, allen head machining is that it kind of if you look closely in there, there's kind of like a little tiny cone on the inside there. So that's where the the, the screw fits. So this is this is the, uh, the pivoting action. And then this outside collar is the uh, is a hub adapter. So this this currently uh, fits on the Toyota Yaris and the Toyota Prius. And it just slides over there. And then this is a, uh, a a bubble level. And this is a big one. I mean, this bubble moves fast. It's very sensitive. Uh, I like this one because a lot of the things I saw online, people were modifying a Harbor Freight bubble balancer to get it to work properly. But what I found is the the bubble that they use is like in an oil and it moves very slow. It's not very sensitive. This one is like super sensitive. I mean, this thing, you walk into the room and, and this thing starts moving. It's that sensitive. So this works really well. And then for the base, I'm just using a 25 pound weight. And this is another little 3D printed part fits in there. And the uh, tube slides into this. And I'll make the STL files available in the video description if you guys are interested in this. Uh, this is a work in progress. So as I refine this, it'll, it'll, it'll just get better. To put it together, just slide the little cap with the screw on there. Actually, I'm going to do it, uh, I'm going to do it this way. 
And then this slides in into the bottom section. And then the bubble balancer balances on this pin. So what I like to do to make sure that I get it right is I'll, I'll take the, the thing out, present it on the part, and then insert it into the, uh, the little collar. And you can see that the thing is super sensitive. Let me lower you guys down so you can see a, bit, a little bit better. I'm just going to wait here for the bubble to stop. See what I mean about it being very sensitive. All right, so let me get you guys in close. And you can see that that thing is uh, is spot on right now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheel on there. And the way I like to put the wheel on is I'll, uh, I like to take the cone off, put the cone on the wheel first, and then I'll take the, the pipe out, present it on the cone, and then I want to put this whole thing on top of the... Uh, on top of the, the base. So I'm just gonna rotate the tire very carefully. So right now, let me take this thing off here so I can show you. So right now, it's showing me that the bubble is uh, more to, to this side, more to the to this side. So to get the bubble to move back to the middle, I need to put some weight. I need to put some weight on this side. So I'm going to wait for it to completely stop. Sorry that it's kind of hard to see that bubble. Alright, so I'm going to put you guys back over here. What we're going to use for weights is, uh, you can get these at Harbor Freight. They're Pittsburgh quarter ounce uh, wheel weights. And this is enough to do one car. Uh, and you might have, you know, depending on how many weights you use, uh, you may have a little bit left over. But they're about $9. You pick them up at uh, Harbor Freight. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the weights in the uh, in the area where, where I think they need to be. Um, so I'm going to place the weights. I'm going to stick them right behind the spoke. The spokes of the of the rim right on the inside so I want to make sure that where I apply these weights it's kind of close to that area so if I put the weights on the end of the wheel and balance it that way and then place them further in the balance is not going to be accurate so I need to place it more or less over here and that's too much weight so I need to take some off so that was a full strip I'm going to cut back maybe two. So this is just under a full uh, full length of weight. And that's still too much. I'm going to take one more off. Take. Sometimes uh, it's kind of tricky when you're trying to place the weights in between the spokes. So I'm just going to use a little tiny little piece of tape here to hold the weight in place. It's still too much weight. So I'm going to take one more off. So now we're down to just four weights. And that's about right right there. Let me show you where the bubble is. So there's the, the weights. And there's the, the bubble. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take them off of there and I'm going to stick them where they need to go. Which is going to be... Turn on the light so you guys can see. So what I'm going to place them is right on this inside edge right here. And I'm just going to get down on the floor and uh, stick them. You could, you could take the wheel off.
and then stake them and then put it back on. But I, I like to just do it like this because it's uh, it's more accurate that way. Right now, I just have it lightly pressed uh, where I think it needs to go. I'm going to wait for this thing to stabilize again. And yeah, that's good. All right, so now I'm just going to press them down. And then I'm going to check it one more time. Yeah, let me show you guys. <laughs> And that's good right there. Kind of hard to see with that glare. Anyway, when I put the camera directly over the bubble, I got that that glare. But you can see the bubble is pretty much in the middle. All right, so that's it. That, this one's done. I'm going to go ahead and do the other four. And then uh, take it out for a test drive. Guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. I'll make the uh, STL files available in the video description uh, along with, uh, I'll put up a slide so you can see how this part is assembled. All this is uh, underneath these three screws is uh, a little spring and then the spring sits in a little, uh, in a little cavity on these 3D printed parts and uh, the top part rocks on the, on the spring that's how you, you do the initial adjustment so by raising or lowering these one of these three screws you center the bubble once the bubble is centered then you go ahead and work with your actual wheel alright guys this video is a wrap